Bonjour, mes amis. Bienvenue. Welcome back to Parlons Français. It's so great to have you here again today. Well, I hope you've been looking over that verb aller from last time and those places that you can go. We're going to add some more to those really soon. First of all, today, let's start by reviewing the verb aller really quickly. Remember, aller literally means to go. So if I'm ever going to say, I need to go, or she is going to go, then you would say, aller, just like it is. No changes. But if we want to say, I go, or she goes, or they go, or we go, then we have to make some quick changes to the verb, just like we do in English. We're going to change those to some different conjugations. And let's just put those up really quick. Let's put our chart up. Remember, up top we have ve, je ve, that means I go. And va in the second one, which means you go, tu va. Remember, we can also flip it and say, va tu, are you going? It's same thing, just flip it around because it's a question. And then in the third space, we're going to put va, which means go for he, she, or one. So il va, elle va, on va. And up at the top right, we're going to put allons, which means we go, nous allons. And remember, also, we can say, allons, let's go, let's, let's go, let's get going. And the next one, allez, vous allez, which means you go, plural, or respectfully to one person. You can also say, allez, go. You can tell somebody. Uh, and then the, finally, on the bottom, we have vont, which means go for they, the two forms of they, ils vont and elles vont. All right, so let's look really quick at those places. Let's just pronounce them one more time. Say these after me. The school is l'école. And remember, is that masculine or feminine? Feminine. All right. And the beach is la plage. All right. And let's say hotel, l'hôtel. And is that one masculine or feminine? It is masculine. <clears throat> All right. And next one, let's say la banque. All right, that's the bank and the apartment. Try saying this one, l'appartement. And that one again, apartments are masculine. And the fun place, the pool, everybody, I want you to say la piscine. La piscine, right? And then the post office is la poste. And remember church, which is feminine, l'église. And the hospital, which is masculine, l'hôpital. And then we have the mountain, which is la montagne. And the countryside, la campagne. La campagne. Let me say that right as well. La campagne. All right. And we use this with a couple of questions. Remember, we put this one up. Où allez-vous? Where are you going? Speaking to one person respectfully, and the person says this. Je vais à l'école. I'm going to school. Je vais à l'école. <clears throat> Next one we put up was, Où vas-tu? Where are you going? Where are you going? Je vais à la maison. I'm going to the house. All right. And this one, Où allons-nous aujourd'hui? Where are we going today? Où allons-nous aujourd'hui? Allons à la piscine. Let's go to the pool. All right. I think that's enough review for today. Now, as we're talking about where we're going, a while ago I used an example of je vais à la maison. Je vais à la maison, which means I'm going to the house. Well, that works, but really there's a more common way to say that someone is going to one's house or someone is at one's house. We could, if we wanted to, say je suis à la maison de... Colette. I am at the house of Colette. And we do express possession that way a lot of times in French, but really when we're talking about being at someone's house or being at home, we're going to do it a different way. So I'm going to introduce this word to you here. Let's go ahead and put it up. It's che. C-H-E-Z. Che. Now, today I'm just going to give you the very basic form of this and later on, we can use it with some different kinds of pronouns that will allow us to not have to say a name, but to say his house, their house, our house, your house. So we do those a little differently. I'll introduce that a little bit to you today. But the biggest thing is to understand the word 
chez. So here's a couple of examples. A while ago, we said, où allons-nous aujourd'hui? Where are we going today? Où allons-nous aujourd'hui? We're going to go to Suzanne's house. We're not going to say la maison de Suzanne. We're going to say, nous allons chez Suzanne. We put chez in front of that noun, Suzanne, the person whose house it is. So, nous allons chez Suzanne. Now, we could also say, let's go to Suzanne's house, which would be, allons chez Suzanne. Allons chez Suzanne. Okay, so let's try another example. Where are they going? Où vont-ils? Where are they going? Où vont-ils? They're going to Yvette's house. See if you can think about that one for a second. They're going to Yvette's house. Ils vont chez Yvette. Ils vont chez Yvette. I know what you're noticing. A while ago, I didn't say the Z when I said chez. Now I did. That's because the Y in French, especially at the beginning of a word, is treated like a vowel. Because uh, it does have that E sound, like almost like an I. So, ils vont chez Yvette. We're going to carry that Z over through the Y. All right? Now, I will just go ahead and introduce to you a couple of those pronouns that I was telling you about we'll do in the future. For myself, I'm not going to say je. Je suis chez je. Je means I. So, I don't really say I'm at I house. There's a different word. I know you've heard this word before. It's moi. Moi. We've all heard that word. So I'm going to use that when I'm talking about the word chez, and I'm using that. So, je suis chez moi. Je suis chez moi. All right? Don't try to say that really fast. Je suis chez moi. All right. Now, I'm uh, using other people, where are they? Talking about they're at somebody's house, plural. Et Yvette et Colette. And Yvette and Colette. I'm asking, where are they now? If I'm, if I'm at home, where are they? Elles sont chez elles. Elles sont chez elles. And now with you, if I'm talking to one person that I know well, I'm going to not say moi, I'm going to say toi. It's almost the same. We just flipped that first letter. Moi becomes toi. Je suis chez toi. Nous allons chez toi. We're going to your house. Okay? So you chez and practice aller with chez. And all of those places that we've been talking about, put it in as many contexts as you can um, and just internalize that information. All right, time to move on to another verb. We've been introducing some new verbs today. The next one I want to introduce to you is this one, avoir, avoir. It almost sounds like by, avoir, but it's avoir. And this literally means to have. Okay, so anytime I'm going to say the words to have, I'm going to say avoir. But once again, we can't say avoir with pronouns like je avoir. That wouldn't make sense because that would mean I to have. And that really wouldn't make sense. So just like we did with aller and être, we're going to change these conjugations so that they do sound right. Now, let's talk about the je, per, the je form, which goes with je. Now, je, its conjugation is a, a, y, uh, a, i, but what happens is, again, a starts with uh, a vowel, and so we take off the, the previous vowel, the e, becomes an apostrophe, and I have becomes je. I have je. Now, you have. We're going to use an A-S for this form. Tu a. You have tu a. Now for the il, el, and on version, on the bottom left here, we're going to use simply the letter A. A. Remember they hang out together because they all use the same stuff. They're going to use the letter A. So he has il a. <clears throat> she has el a. And of course we can use it with on as well as in one has. On the top right of our chart, we have, a while ago we said nous allons, now we're going to say nous avons. Nous avons. We have. And you might be able to guess this next one because a while ago it was allez, vous allez, now it's vous avez. Vous avez. You have, plural, or one person respectfully. 
And the form that we use down in the bottom right uh, with they, the two forms of they, is on, O-N-T. Elles ont and ils ont, they have. We're carrying over that S because on begins with a vowel. Ils ont, elles ont. All right, let's look at it in context. And we talk about, uh, we're going to be talking about family very soon. So we're going to bring in a couple of family words here for you to start looking at and throwing around. J'ai trois sœurs. J'ai trois sœurs. I have three sisters. I have three sisters. J'ai trois sœurs. Let's look at this one. Il a cinq frères. Il a cinq frères. He has five brothers. And some of you are pet lovers. Here's a good one for you. Nous avons quatre chiens. Nous avons quatre chiens. We have four dogs. We consider those part of the family a lot of times, don't we? Now let's look at some of these in uh, context of questions. We need to start bringing in a question phrase. Now, in French, there is a question phrase. <clears throat> it has a little bit of a strange look to it, but write it a few times, you're going to have it down. So we're going to start using this phrase in various forms and questions, and that form is this, est-ce que, E-S-T, we hyphen C-E, and then que. So it's kind of like saying it is that which, it kind of all runs together. Now, we put est-ce que into a sentence when we want to make it a question. Now, do we always have to use est-ce que in a question? No, we don't. But it is commonly, commonly used. And, and there are going to be some situations where you will need to use it later on in future lessons. But we'll get to that later. So right now, let's just become familiar with est-ce que. All right, so let's look at this sentence here. Quand est-ce que... Est-ce que tu arrives? Let me start that over. Quand est-ce que tu arrives? When are you arriving? Or when do you arrive? Okay, it just makes it a question. Here's another example. Est-ce que tu as une grande maison? Do you have a big house? Est-ce que tu as une grande maison? All right, here's another one. Do you like soccer? Est-ce que tu aimes le football? Do you like soccer? Here's another one. Où, the word where, we learned that before. Où est-ce que tu vas aller ce weekend? Where are you going this weekend? Now, let's break that up really quick just to bring back aller one more time. It says, où est-ce que tu vas, where are you going, aller, to go? So, aller means to go. Remember, we talked about it a couple of times. So, it literally says, where are you going to go this weekend. Où est-ce que tu vas aller ce weekend? All right. Now, with, que means what or which. And so we're putting that, and that's, that's kind of what you're saying is, is it that which doesn't make a lot of sense in English, but it does make a good question in French. Now, let's put it together with the word que, which means what or which. At the beginning also, so now we're going to say this as, a, as a, a form of saying what at the beginning. So Q-U like this, and then the apostrophe E-S-T hyphen C-E, next word Q-U-E. So qu'est-ce que? That's a way to say what. Later I'm going to tell you the difference between this and another one. So understand that now it's just really saying what. Let's put this together with uh, some things that we've already learned. Look at this sentence here. Où est-ce que vous allez aujourd'hui? Nous allons à l'église. Quand est-ce que tu vas à l'école? When are you going to school? Je vais à l'école maintenant. I'm going to school now. Je vais à l'école maintenant. All right, now let's bring in that what form. Qu'est-ce que tu as? What do you have? Qu'est-ce que tu as? It's implying what. It's asking a subject, what. What do you have? Qu'est-ce que tu as? An answer could be, j'ai mon livre. I have my book. J'ai mon livre. All right. Now, practice that phrase, est-ce que, by itself, and also, qu'est-ce que. Okay, that 
might require you to do a little more research on the internet just to become a little more familiar with it and see it in other contexts. But we'll visit that a little later. All right, now let's switch back to verbs for a moment. Um, I want to talk about one type of verb in French, and that is a verb that ends with E-R. We have a large set of verbs in French that end with the letters E-R. <clears throat> now, here's an example of one, aimer, which means to like or to love. Um, if you've ever uh, heard anybody say, je t'aime, I love you, so we're using this verb, aimer, to like or to love. Here's another example, espérer. This means to hope. Let's look at another one, parler. I know you've heard of parler before. When we say the title of our class is Parlons Français, we're using a form of parler to speak. Chercher means to look for. Another ER. Compter, which means to count. Here's a good one. Donner which means to give. Écouter, which means to listen. You've heard me say before, écouter et répéter. Listen and repeat. So écouter means uh, to, to listen. Continuer means to, probably guessed it, continue. And nager means to swim. And let's do one more. Manger means to eat. All right, let's go over that pronunciation of those just one more time quickly so we can get the verbs themselves down. First of all is aimer, aimer, and espérer, espérer, parler, parler, to speak, remember to look for, chercher, chercher, Conté, conté means to count, to give, donner, donner, listen, écouter, écouter, to continue, continuer, continuer, to swim, nager, nager, and to eat is manger. One more time, manger. All right. The reason we want to learn ER verbs together, and by the way, look up as many of them as you can. Start learning as many of them as you can, because right now I'm about to tell you how to conjugate those. We simply use a pattern. This is great. Once you learn this pattern, you can conjugate any ER verb in the French language unless it has some kind of irregular uh, structure to it. But for all the regular ER verbs, you can conjugate them with these uh, endings here. So guess what? We're going to put on the board, you guessed it, the famous chart, our visual organizer. Now up in the top left, <clears throat> we're going to put the letter E. Now go ahead and remember this. We're also going to put the letter E in the bottom left. The E goes in the top left and the bottom left. And in the middle, between those in the second box on the left or the second space, it's going to be E, which is ES. ES. We have E, E, S, E. E, E, S, E. All right? And then on the right, we have ON, which is O, N, S. And in the middle, we have E, which is E, Z. And in the bottom right, we have E, N, T. E-N-T. All right, now let's look at how this works. All you got to do is remember what we've been doing with the chart this whole time. Je is in the top left. Therefore, that's the ending we're going to use with the verb when we use the verb with je. Okay, so take the word parler, for example, to speak. Parler, P-A-R-L-E-R. -E First thing we want to do take off the ER, okay? Take off the ER <clears throat> is the easiest way to remember it, and then put the ending on it. So I want to say, I speak French. I speak French. But the top left, we've got je. That's where je stays. He's in the top left of the chart. 
The ending that's on the top left of the chart is what we're going to use on the verb parler. So take the verb parler, take off the ER. Now the ending E is up on the top left. So that's the ending we put on parler, just an E. So now we should be left with P-A-R-L-E. So we want to say, I speak French. All you got to do is say, je parle, je parle. I speak French, je parle français. Je parle français. You speak French. Tu is on the left middle of the chart. The ending that goes in the left middle is ES. So on the verb parler, take off the ES, or take off the, the E, R, and put the ES in its place. And now you have P-A-R-L-E-S. Tu parles. You speak French. Tu parles français. He speaks, or she speaks, or one speaks. <clears throat> They're all going to take off the ER, and the ending that lives down here in the bottom left is going to be an E. So that's our ending. Put the E on it. And some people like to say, well, it's, is it easy to remember to take off the ER if you're going to just put an E back on it? Uh, maybe, maybe so. It depends on how you best learn. But... Sometimes it's easier just to remember that you take off the ER every time and just put the ending on it. Um, instead of, for the first one, we take off the R, and then the second, we change the R to the S, and then we take off the R on the third one. Um, sometimes it's easier just to remember, take off the ending, put the other ending on there. So let's go uh, to He Speaks. Il parle français. Il parle français. She speaks. Elle parle français. Elle parle français. And of course, the same for on. On parle français. On parle français. So we use the same ending for all three of those. And now let's get to the one that we hear every episode. The new version. For this one, we take off the ER on the top right of the chart. And we put O-N-S. Parlons. Parlons. Nous parlons français. Nous parlons français. And let's speak French, or we speak French, parlons français. That's the name of our show, isn't it? Now, the next one for vous, we just simply say parler. We put an EZ on there. It's real easy, right? Just remember that. For vous, it's real easy. So take off that ER and put an EZ. Vous parlez français. Now, I want to ask you, you, I know you've heard this before. Do you speak French? Parlez-vous français? Parlez-vous français? We're flipping it because it's a question. Speak you French? Okay, so now we're asking it as a question, so we just simply flip it. So I know you've heard that. Now you can use that in context. You can ask somebody, parlez-vous français? And then at the bottom right are two forms of they, are il and elle, il parle, elle parle. I want to point out very quickly that, you know, while we have an ENT on the they forms, people have a hard time with this when they're first learning French because they say, il parle sounds exactly like he speaks. They speak and he speak sounds the same. It does. And I know it's E and then it's ENT, but it, the reason is that the ENT is really not heard is because the N goes through your nose and the T is not pronounced because it's a consonant at the end. So it really becomes almost the same. Il parle. So it sounds the same. How do you know the difference? Well, you are going to know by the context of the conversation. If you're talking about someone, a person, you'll know that it's a singular person. And if you happen to be referring to a group of people, you'll know it's plural. So it all works out in conversation, not to worry. I want to try one more really quick with you. Manger, manger means to eat. So let's kind of put the conjugations of this on our chart. We saw the endings. Now let's look at the conjugations. So if I take the ER off of manger and I put the E at the top, I've got this. Je mange, I eat. Je mange. You eat. Take off the ER. I'm going to put the ES on it. Tu manges, tu manges. He eats, he, she, and one use the same ending, which is the E. So he eats, il mange, il mange. She eats, elle mange, 
et bon, you notice that G in the middle sounds like j. And one eats on mange, on mange. We eat, nous mangeons, nous mangeons. We got an E there. The E helps it flow better into the ONS. So that's just something to remember with the verb manger. Mangeons. And now you, plural E, vous mangez, vous mangez. And they eat, ils mangent, and elles mangent. Okay, now we can do that with all of our ER verbs. We can apply the same pattern to it, and it works out. You can say anything you want to say. All you got to do is remember the name of the verb, what the verb is itself, like aimer is to like or love. Now you can conjugate it. No problem. Friends, we're out of time today in our class, but I want to encourage you to be practicing as much as you can, and I look forward to seeing you the next time. On parlant français.